when I debated Tim Pool, he was saying how he is more anti-war than me because I believe in supporting Ukraine, providing aid with conditions, tying into peace talks and diplomacy. I believe in supporting the Ukrainian people when they are fighting off an imperial invasion by Russia. And he tried to, to corner me on that to say that he is to the left of me on foreign policy. This is how that conversation went down. And I'll give you an update on his latest commentary surrounding Israel. Dead because of the If US the left empire. position was only opposed to war because of the circumstances of the war, then I would say the left is more pro-war and to the right of me on war. That's, I'm completely anti-war, but the war happened because Russia invaded and now Ukraine is trying to defend so itself. Right, right. So you're anti-war, you oppose war. Yes. But you're to the right of me when it comes to Ukraine. Um, I don't think so. Do you believe that the U.S. should be su supplying and aiding the Ukrainians? I do believe so because right, they're defending themselves. Who gets that money? The military. But, 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 no, 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 but they're no, no, defending Raytheon, themselves. Northrop Grumman, Lockheed yeah, Martin. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, I'm opposed to all of that. I, I mean, look, if, if you're you, the right of me, on if that you issue. believe that Russia should be able to invade Ukraine and take territory without recourse, then I mean, that's pro imperialism. That's not. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's still no, pro war. No, uh, yes, it a is. lot of people a lot around, around the world do a lot of bad things. I don't think the U.S. should be an empire going and funding wars all over the world. We're not funding wars. We're funding the defense. I mean, like, and, and there's a, there's something that you can be said where where should we draw a certain line? I have already conceded that strings should be attached and we should be involved in peace negotiations. But let's, to, let's, to, to, to flatten the power dynamics here. I mean, I would imagine this is like the same argument that you hear uh, when it comes to Israel and Palestine, right, where Palestinians are defending themselves. And then it's, oh, my gosh, uh, they are just complete. It's completely symmetrical. Uh, Israel and Palestine. These are two actors just battling it out. So no, in favor of intervention one, there? I would love to fund Palestinians so that they were able to have a better life You are life to the right of me on foreign policy. Well, we already fund Israel, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are yeah. you against that? That's a tougher question I don't have an answer to. I don't, I don't, <laughs> You're in favor of funding no, military. No, 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 no. We fund the Iron Dome. We literally saying we fund their military industrial complex. Anything enough about it? Then if and it's I your lean principle against and you're anti-war, then you should be saying that we should cut Israel funding for Israel or and I defense can say simply, right now. I lean against, I said, that's why I said 99%. I'll say I absolutely lean against providing uh, military aid to, to Israel. I just don't know. Uh, I will say a new war in Ukraine in a territory that we are not, the United States is not, doesn't mean that I'm as far left as possible on the question of imperialism. It means that you are to the right of me on that issue. Yeah. Like, your, your, your position would provide funding for massive multinational military industrial complex corporations. I mean, I think that's the fact that we do uh, have those contracts as messed up. I think the United States, I think, sure, I think the United States should be more primarily, you want to nationalize the defense industry? You want to go for that? I'm down. I don't know about nationalizing that. That, it's, that <laughs> powers, it makes it permanent. Well, I, there's always going to be a weapons industry and there's always going to be, it should be much, it should be severely cut into. But the United States, by the way, made a promise in 1993 to Ukraine. Okay, so it, this is when we get more into the Ukraine stuff. But just what, is, to give. what is it? The, hold on, what is it? The I never even caught that. What does the decentralized military industrial complex look like? It's, it's the garbage. only the only customer for the, the military industrial complex are governments. Like there are no like that's that's who the customer base is. You that can't is the decentralized definition that. of the military industrial complex, right? right. Yeah. Yeah, the whole, the, the, the whole the whole military industry, the whole arms industry, the primary customer are governments and, and the U.S. government being one the biggest customer. So what is the decentralization of that look like? It's not <laughs> every household will be responsible for producing two bullets a day for the army. We'll yeah, just, right. We'll, we'll mail them in. <laughs> Yeah, we'll go back to the well-regulated militia of that of that ilk. I mean, it's just it's 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 such nonsense. And I caught him in that because he he's a political commentator, but he has no awareness of the top recipient of our military aid, uh, the top recipient of our military aid for decades and decades, let alone the many more billions that is currently being floated to be sent to them through Congress and the 100 weapons shipments, shipments that Biden has circumvented Congress for since October 7th, by the way, to send to Israel illegally without the consent of Congress. We call that out on this show every day. But apparently he's to the left of me. Now, he doesn't know a lot 
about Israel. He doesn't know enough to comment. On it. Right I didn't know he, he was know, a Ukrainian he expert. Doesn't know a lot. I mean, he he has an yeah. opinion on Ukraine, but not of Israel. Yeah. I didn't realize he was an expert on Russia and Ukraine. I didn't know that was his wheelhouse. That's well, where his beanie right. got made. Yeah, it, he's uh, that, that that was. It's just as odd to have such a strong opinion about. Uh, funding Ukraine when you don't have any opinion about funding Israel, which again has is not a new development, as I say, the top recipient of our military aid for many, many years. We He did some research, though. He did some research. Now, let's prove. Let's see if he proves it. He is much more leftist than myself, than you guys, Brandon, Binder, on the issue of war. Let's see how he is commenting right now on uh, Israel's genocide of the Palestinian people. I don't understand why these people are so obsessed with this country. But I'll tell you what triggers me and fills me with blinding rage. Whoa. Cult members. Zealots. That pisses me off. You know why? Well, the humanitarian crisis in Yemen is considered to be one of the worst humanitarian crises ever. Crises ever. You've got Burma with, uh, I think, hundreds of thousands being killed so far. You've, uh, uh, I don't know, how about the Uyghur Muslims? So when crackpot lunatics like this woman, who is a psychopath, deranged, screaming, you should be upset. I'm like, oh, should I be upset over the Uyghur Muslims? Should I be upset over Sudan? Should I be upset over Boko Haram? Should I be upset over the cartels? Should I be upset over CBP trafficking children into this country? Should I be upset over Burma? Should I be over, be, should I be upset over, insert every single humanitarian crisis on the planet? You psychopaths need to shut the up. You're allowed to be he, upset. Oh, he bleep out of those fuck. issues. You're allowed to be an <laughs> activist on any one of those issues. But don't lie to me and say it's a genocide and that's why we're upset. No, if the issue was genocide, you'd be upset over a whole bunch of other countries. Now, of course, I have friends who are very, very critical of Israel. They're allowed to be. And I'm not talking about them when they say, hey, look, this airstrike killed these people. I'm like, look, man, there's war going on. Criticize them all day and night. My point is, when I ask people like this, she's screaming and ranting. Do you care about any other country? They don't know. They just don't. What? You know, the thing, Tim, about political protests, I'm going to explain this to him very, very succinctly. Is it's about what your government does. People don't go into the streets to talk about all the bad things in the world and yell into the void because it gives them some sort of emotional release as we just saw him engage in there. I, I, um, it's about protesting and putting pressure on your government. And the United States is not funding China's subjugation of the Uyghurs. It's not funding what's happening in Burma. It is funding Israel's genocide of the Palestinian people. So I hope that clears things up for him there. Yeah, I mean, it seems pretty. I also like how he, he carved out uh, that it's different for his friends who care about it, but doesn't really explain what the difference is. He just doesn't explain. Are you, are you, are you trying to tell me that there is some big right wing movement of people who are upset about uh, us funding Israel, who are also out there protesting uh, Burma and uh, the Uyghur, how the Uyghurs are treated in, in China? I've not seen that. I know there was some big right wing movement behind that. What are they, uh, two people standing outside of an embassy? I mean, where is that movement? I don't know what he's even talking about. So um, he basically just carved out a, uh, an exception for his buddies uh, on the right. But, you know, even then, that's a very, it's a very, like, <laughs> specific thing. I don't even know why he did that. Um, yeah. But, well, yeah, your point is perfect. He, he's responsible. He's a responsible critique of e Israel, you know, him right. and his friends. Right, who he right. tells, like, you know, these things happen when they complain. So, I mean, it's not as though they're having an effective, their style of arguing with him is very effective. But I always find it so not interesting because it's actually just sad, like how triggered the right wing gets 
by other, you know, by other, I mean, leftists being like emotional or aggressive in their defense of, you know, their defense of the downtrodden, their defense of, you know, I remember their anti-genocide stances. Like they pretend like it's so cringe to like be emotional in defense of like people who are actually suffering. And then they get just as emotional in defense of like made up things. Yes. Like, you know, like they're just always like, you know, I was going to say in tears over Sydney Sweeney's boobs, but you know, that's just. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all a- are to, to turn certain degrees, but um Anyway, I just found that fascinating.